Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to continue looking at arrays and specifically in families. And so with this video, we're going to take this array that we looked at in a previous video, and we're actually going to take this array and add another array to it so we can have multiple arrays within one family. And so we can have basically a horizontal and a vertical array so we can literally determine how many of these single array objects that we want to see on a wall. And so, I mean, that's the example here, but this will work anywhere, whether you want to place it on a floor or whatever it is, this could be giant chairs. It could be little tiny things like I have here, these little three inch little peg things, anything like you want. So if you, I will highly encourage you to check out the first video because that video got us to this point to where we have made this array. And when, to give you just a really quick rundown of what we happened in the last video is we took this single array object, just one of these guys, and then we brought that into a separate family, which we used to create an array. And we have a separate parameter, which is this horizontal number, where we can then determine how many that we want to have. We added a material to the array object and then tracked that material parameter through the array horizontal family and then finally into the project so we can actually have a separate material. So there we go. So where we are now is if I go into this family, you can see where we have. And we're just going to see those three that we made earlier, which is just the simple three objects in an array. And we can see that within this reference level view. Here is my array. Very simple stuff. And so honestly, at this point, this is where things start getting a bit more difficult, more interesting, a little different. But I want to take this array and then actually make it go vertical, like have the same array basically as many as I have horizontal, I want to then determine how many rows I want to have. Well, okay, now how we do that? Well, we would not do that within this family. We're going to have to use another nested family. And the reason is I want this array to be its own, own object, its own family, its own singular thing that I then have more power over, that I can use these reference planes to align and place where I want, but if I try to do that array within this family, it's just, things are going to just break and be really difficult. So first what we want to do is go ahead and make a new family. And because I want to make sure I'm using this as a face-based family, we want to make sure that we're picking a face-based family. So generic model face-based will work just fine. And so when I make this, I, of course, do want to save once more. And we'll go ahead and call this vertical. So here's my array horizontal face. I want to call this array vertical face. Beautiful. There we go. So this is saved. Good to go. And now I don't really need to do anything within this family other than to just load that in to my array vertical face. I don't need to load it into the project. So there we go. Yeah, I'll save it. Why not? That works. And again, just like placing this, pl placing any other object in other families, I want to place this on the face, but I don't want to place it specifically where I want it. I just want to throw it out here. That's fine. And now I want to align specifically this family to the center of this family. Of course, I want to align these things to so they're going to stay in the same place. I know where they're going to be inputted. So there we go. So basically, we're at the point where we just were, but we're now within a new family. And this family means, you can see here, it's all one giant object, and that's exactly what I want. So before I do anything else, I want to go into the type here. And again, we want to actually track this through. And so I don't, yeah, it looks like it's pulling the material from my project because I applied one, but I want to actually make a parameter that is object material. So I can maybe change that in the actual project later on if I want to. So there's my object material, cool. And so now, if you remember from the last video, what we did is we took that singular object, which was right here, and we started to array that horizontally. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it vertically. Now, before I do that, I actually need to add a separate reference plane. And so I'm just, again, I'm going to dump it in and we're going to determine this distance right now. And so this is something I would have recommended that we do in the initial family which is like actually distance one from the other. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to do it in this family because I want to control how far one row is from another row. 
And just because I want to keep things consistent, I want to make sure that, of course, it is consistent with these other values. So, so here we go. So let's go and dimension this. And that looks like a weird value. Uh, so how would we determine this distance? Well, uh, we'll just measure it. This to that, four and a half inches. I could have gone back to the family to remember that, but I want to place this at four and a half inches. Okay, that's fine. And so really all I'm going to do is I could make, the cool thing is I can make this a parameter, and so I could literally change that on the fly, the actual distance between each array. But I'm not going to do that for this video. I actually just want to lock this and keep this where it is. And so all this is going to do is determine where we're, where these objects are going to align in the above rows. And I could even go as far as to make another one. And I probably would do that because, again, I, I feel better about working with the third array as opposed to the second because one versus two is not quite different enough for me when it comes to arrays. I want to see that pattern continue more. And so, again, I want to make this 4.5 inches. Again, I, I would probably make this a parameter just so I could use the same value and whatever, but it's fine. And so at this point, I want to make sure this is locked as well. And so all we need to do is select this object, and just like we did in the previous video, go to our array tool, and I just want to choose this to that. I mean, it really is. That's what I want. And I want to choose three. Now, I want... I actually want to go back and show you what it would be like if we didn't have those values and we didn't choose the specific values that are associated with these reference planes. But, of course, we still want them associated so we can even deal with that later. So I let's say it's there, you know, and we're like, oh, okay, whoa, this is really far apart. Well, <laughs> so at this point, like I said, we, we can put this wherever we want, but I will actually need to align this to this second and the third reference plane because I actually do want it to follow these. We just made these dimensions. And so I actually don't need to go into the group because if I were to go into the group, it would try and shove everything down all at once, keeping the distance between them. And we don't want to do that. We want to actually change the distance between them. So how would we do that? Well, just align to this second one here. We can align to this second or we can even align to the third. And once I align from the third reference plane to that final third array, we can see everything is located where we want. So that's great. So I'm going to lock that in here. And let's go ahead and just, for experimental purposes, come in here. And, well, actually, we haven't even made the array yet, the array parameter. So, again, click the parameter there. And I need to then add my parameter, which is going to be vert array vertical or vertical array or vertical number was what I had before, a vertical number. Again, I want to make this an instance because I want to be able to change this on the fly per model that I have in. Okay, so there we go. And so maybe I change this to 5 and see what happens. Hit apply. And then now I have 5. I mean, that's exactly what I want. So basically, that's perfect. And so I would say this is a good default, you know, a little 3 by 5. And so that's kind of it. We have... What do we have here? Well, we have the exact same array material that we then loaded into the horizontal array. And then from there, save that and loaded that into this family, which is the vertical array. And so we have this static horizontal object that we can determine and then use that to array. So actually, before I even load this in, I have one more thing to do. Because if you notice, if I come to the family types, I can see other which is my vertical number. I just made that. And I actually want to go ahead and change that to general because that I want that to match the other uh, horizontal. And so there we go. I have that in general. But you'll notice I don't even see the horizontal number. And so why is that? Well, I actually need to come into any one of these, but I need to come into the type properties here. And this is where we see our material. But remember, because I made that horizontal number and instance parameter, we can see it right here. So there's three. So again, I want to associate this not with vertical number unless you want the same number. So it's a giant square. It would work. Um, that would work, of course. But I want to actually continue this parameter into the project. Horizontal number. There we go. There's my horizontal number. So now when I come in and finish this, they all have that now. But when I look at my family types, that's specifically what I care about at this point. I can see there's my horizontal number and my vertical number. I need to associate this to the general, of course, the general 
doesn't matter. I just want to keep them consistent. So there's my horizontal and my vertical. So cool. So I can even just change this horizontal on the fly now too. And there's my fourth. And so I'm going to put that back at three just as a default. It seems to make more sense. And we'll go ahead and load this into my project. And yes, I do want to save this. Now the thing to be aware is that whenever I placed this original horizontal within my project, we're going to have to actually replace that because when I click on this, it, it is actually just the horizontal. I didn't actually replace the horizontal with vertical. Like it, it's still the horizontal. Now I would probably end up renaming this array vertical underscore face to be something like array underscore face, you know, basically the final array. <laughs> and so, you know, we have 53 here and I'm going to go ahead and change this to my array vertical face. And it's going to come all the way down here. But we do know that we have 53 horizontal. Cool. So there's my 53 horizontal looking pretty good. But now I have rows to work with, which is my vertical number. And so maybe I want 20. It probably won't fill up the wall. Probably need more than that. In fact, what is the size of the wall? It's probably 20, 20 by 20. So let me go ahead and just venture on and guess that I might want 53 here. And sure enough, eventually, this type of thing does take a while because there's a lot going on. And so just be aware, this is it's pretty heavy and pretty taxing on your system to make a ton of these. So that's like way, way over 2,500. That's a ton. That is a ton. So just just know that what we're dealing with here, like this is a lot. And But really, you can place this anywhere. Like let's go ahead and put a floor in here, you know, just just to put a floor in. And once we do that, we can place this object there. We can even pick a new host because it's a face base. Pick this new host, boom, place it right there, easy enough. So really, this can go anywhere that you want. So <laughs> I do kind of like that, especially with face base. It gives you a lot more options as to where it can go. Uh, but really, that's going to do it for this video. We looked at taking this horizontal array and making it a vertical array because you know, we want to have those options. We want to determine how many we want horizontally and then how many we want vertically. You know, if you just want a number horizontal, okay, stop there. If you want just numbers vertically, stop there. You know, that's definitely something we have the power to do now because we have those as instant parameters. We can do whatever we want with them. So that will do it for this video. If you did happen to learn something, which I really hope you did, really hope you did because we did kind of cover a lot. We have you know, clearly, we have over 2,500 pegs here. There's a lot going on here. So if you did happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. And I hope to see you in the next video. There might be another array video in the future because there's more that we can look at here. There's, I mean, really a ton with arrays and families. So be sure to stick around for that. And really, if you haven't, for some reason, gotten this far into the video and haven't watched the first video for the array, then please do that because it'll help you out here too. So I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.